If you track back in the history of Scour, you'll see that video switching, vision mixing on our panels is one of the first things we did and vMix is also one of the first things we ever supported. This is an amazing software and I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you already know that you're probably won over as a fan of vMix and you want to know how Scour controllers control it and what new features we have in the pipeline and today I have the pleasure of announcing vMix 2.0 from Skyhawk. So vMix 1.0 is Skyhawk's integration with vMix through a little application that optimizes the information flow be between our panels and vMix. And today vMix 2.0 is another new application that extends the amount of features. Since you probably already know the main things we do with vMix and Skyhoi controllers. I want to focus in this video on all the new stuff, but just quickly, a Skyhoi controller is this beautiful interface and it is characterized by being highly configurable. So you can have it exactly as you want. And it's also characterized by the flexibility. You see all those small displays, they allow you to change the function on buttons and knobs and have it displayed right above the button what they do. You don't need to copy paste small labels and stickers on keys and so on. No, 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 you have it fully flexible on the panel and it will adapt. So as you'll see in this video, these are coming in super handy to uh, utilize this fantastic and flexible platform. But today the points I want to run through is not just how we can actually uh, uh, switch. Here we are selecting for preview, here we cut directly to to the active source. No, uh, I want to show you the new things. And the first one is one of the great uh, professional features that vMix has recently uh, come out with, which is ME rows. They call it mixes, but you know it on other switching systems as ME rows. So it's like a separate video switcher inside the video switcher. And that's very useful in many cases. Now you see those in this configuration of vMix uh, right here. You see this is mix number three and uh, mix number two over here and mix number three right here. But if I just use the bus as um, by default because I have a selector for the mix out here in the corner it says mix one so we are on ME1 and uh, with this one I can make my transitions, I can make my um, uh, main program if you will, uh, card, auto, transitions, all these great things. But if I press on this button I can go to mix 2, if I press once again I have mix 3 and if I press once again I'm at mix 4. Oh, so it blanked out and you see the displays are changing so they show you that nothing is actually mapped onto mix 4 here. No, I have mix 3 and 2 and now notice how I go back again. By the way, if you don't know, these are four-way buttons. So this is like a little encoder, but you can just press the edges and it is so neat on these buttons. You get used to it really quickly that just hitting the edges will go forth and back between values. So you see, I'm now on mix two and um, I can use the uh, buttons for cutting directly to, um, to the active and the preview sources here. And you see it reflected on the mix two thumbnail in the interface, right? So the great thing is that you have tactile control over just those things inside of vMix. So uh, if I go to mix three, guess what? Yeah, I do the same for the third mix right there. The second thing we want to work on today is how playlists are controlled on a Skahoy surface. So playlists, just to remind you, is that we can build up a number of clips by clicking here that we can either have automatically played back or we can skip through them um, by, manually by a button on Skahoy control. And that's what we want to do today. So if you are into that game, um, uh, well, yeah, I wanted to remind you right here that we have four clips in our playlist right now. Webcam, desktop capture, mix two and blue. So I'll just close this one down. And if I click here on playlist, that would be the same as if I press the play playlist button on the Skahoy Airfly Pro. And um, just to get to this, because you saw something else just a moment ago, you can see that we have some buttons up here that change forth and back between states and the state called extra gives you access to extra options. We'll actually work a lot in this menu today or in this state. You see this button playlist will enable the playlist down there. So you see it becomes red. And if it had automatic playback enabled, it would now start playing back automatically. But just next to this button, we have previous and next entries. So you see, I press the next entry and it actually goes to the next entry in my playlist. If you could remember the order of these, the next one 
And then the final one was the blue one. If I press the previous entry, then it goes back again. And see how nicely, uh, and this is of course vMix, where you set the transitions between them. Um, that also happens. So everything is just control tactile style from the Skyhoy surface using these two buttons. So that's also super great and now integrated in vMix 2.0 for Skyhoy controllers. We now need to look at the multi quarter So we also support that one. Let's um, take a look at the configuration of this. So if we go in here, the multi quarter you can wing off which um, outputs that you want to, or yeah, uh, input sources that you want to record, ISO record. And uh, again, this is something that you do inside of vMix, but you might want to enable multi cording on a button. For instance, you have a volunteer and you want it to be super easy for them to just touch that button that hangs on the wall or sits on the desk in a Skyhoy surface to start the multi quarter, which I just did. And you see it's red down here. So uh, with the multi quarter, I can turn it on and I can also turn it off again. Apart from the multi quarter, we have next to that the external outputs. If you want to import a video source from vMix into Zoom on the same computer, you can do that using external. And with the button here, you can toggle on and off external. Actually, the little icon you see in the corner of these buttons indicates that these buttons are toggle buttons. So just like the multi quarter could be toggled on and off by a press on this button, likewise, we can enable and disable external outputs using this button. So it's vMix 2.0 and there will be maybe a 2.1 and there will also be a 3.0 at some point. And generally Skyhoy style, we are all the time adding value to your investment by improving our software. So some things are already here. Other things are in the pipeline. One of the things that we hope to have for, for the release very soon is also to be able to manage the outputs of external. It's right in the pipeline of the developers and it's probably a matter of days or even hours before it's ready for you. So I can't demonstrate it today, but it is there and we will also support it in vMix 2.0. So shortcuts is one of the other super useful features that you find in vMix and I know a lot of you will, will really, uh, that you love them because they are flexible, they make it so easy to set up vMix for all kinds of things, there's small shortcut keys on your keyboard here. And one of the things that is really nice is the way vMix can learn such shortcuts. And now Skyhoy will also announce itself when you record shortcuts. So let's look at how that works. So we go to settings. And uh, this slow computer needs a little bit of time to open settings. Yes, there it is. So we go to shortcuts down here. And you see we have already three shortcuts. It's A, B, and C. And they probably correspond to A, B, and C over here on the panel. So what about D? Now, if you put it into learning mode by pressing add, and if you use the find function here, you can now press a key on your keyboard or controller. So guess what? We press the D on the Skyhoy controller and it announces itself here. So you can now say yes, okay. And then you can assign a function to it, just like you know this long list of nice functionality from vMix that you can assign to this one. Super easy to then create a shortcut for this. So should we try something out? Uh, fade to black sounds like something that even I would understand. So let's just do that. Press OK. OK. And now we are ready to test our shortcut D. So you see that it activates fade to black. Super nice. Let's press it once again to deactivate. So there you see how the learning mode of shortcuts is now available on your Skyhoy panels. Final thing we want to look at is how multi-viewers can be managed from your Skyhoy interface with vMix. So the way I see multi-viewers is like what we know as super sources on an ATEM switcher. And it is those super nice compositions where you can place multiple sources on a background and so on. And we have one here as source number six. So let's bring that up on active output. And you see it right here. So one of the basic things you can do is to toggle on and off the different windows here. And you do that by a toggle key right here. Currently the little display, and this is where it becomes so useful, tells you this is multi-viewer uh, seven, layer number one. And I can change that to multi-viewer six, layer number one, by a navigation key in the upper um, right corner. So I'm now toggling this on and off. Okay, and with this key, I could navigate to the next one. I could navigate to the next again and the next again. So there you see toggle function that can cycle through the different layers in your multi-viewer, toggle them on and off. And next to that, I have the ability to change to different multi-viewer. So all that is possible. It is likely that you want to set your controller up differently so that 
it wouldn't be a matter of using navigation keys to affect how a single key on the panel does this. You may actually hard code this button. So imagine that you have a row of buttons which would directly affect and always the same affect this uh, thumbnail, this um, layer in your multi-viewer instead of being linked to a variable where you can change that on the fly. That would be the advanced version where three keys does a whole lot instead of what you might prefer having five keys that does a single predictable thing every time. Now this is the general power of Skahoy. That is you can you can set up your interface like that if you uh, want to. So that's always an option underneath the uh, the hood of these products. But let's see how uh, the multi viewers actually work. So if we just click the little wheel here to look at the settings, you can see that my multi viewer is based on a template uh, and it has a number of sources defined like desktop capture webcam and and so forth. And by the way, these sources can be uh, selected as well. So eh, let's try that. If I go to stage here, it says multi view, you can now see that multi uh, viewer six layer four, this is what I select the, the sources for. So we will see in the lower um, in the lower right corner, I would now change the source on this multi viewer by these keys. Okay, you see also they are aligned with the sources that are found in the columns on the panel here as well. Now I can change the multi viewer layer by the navigation key up here. So I could go to layer two and now I could select the source for that one. The final thing we want to do is to see how we can build up a multi viewer with the Skyway panel. And um, the blue source number seven, which is currently on the active output, is my target. So if we enter into its menu and you see the sources that currently none are available for this one. And let's just make sure that we have picked this quad view of uh, things. On the panel you'll currently see that I'm editing multi viewer sec uh, 6 and that's not this one. So I'll just use the key here to go to number 7 and when I've done that you can see that I'm able to basically pick the source for layer 2 as it says right here. I can change over to layer number 3 and I could just quickly select my sources. I could go back to layer number 1 and uh, select the source. No not that one. Maybe this one and I could go to layer number 4 uh, three, four, it says four now, and I could choose that one, maybe not that one, then this one, or this one. So now three different sources in the multi viewer, and it's all done from buttons on the panel. You don't have to have this interface open, as we saw just before, we can change sources without. And don't worry, these boxes show that none is selected, but it's actually VMAX who haven't uh, updated. So if I go back and update, you'll see that, yes, it has chosen the right sources in there. So, but I guess it's not a problem. So as you can see, these are many of the features, most of the features that are unique to vMix 2.0 from Skahoy. All the new good stuff that we have added on top of the existing from vMix 1.0. We hope you like it a lot and we can also tell you that we are all the time working on the next thing with vMix. It has so many features and there will be a version 3.0. But for now, we are very excited about the features we added to 2.0. We know so many of you have been looking forward to this. So we are very excited about releasing it.